where we're going. Uh, we, we go all the way back to the beginning, to Genesis chapter 3. Uh, excuse me, chap Genesis chapter 1 and 31. And God saw everything that He had made, and behold, it was very good. Everything that He had made, it is very good. God did not create anything evil. Everything He created was good. And that's the way it was in the beginning. So I want you to understand that. Then suddenly we get down to chapter 3, and chapter 3 opens with this serpent. And he is clearly evil. He is calling God's word into question in chapter Genesis chapter 3 and 1. He says to Eve, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? He is being he is trying to deceive her and, and trying to be destructive. Uh, he says, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden. Uh, in Genesis 2.17, God has said in that chapter, that day that you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. But the serpent says, you surely will die. There again, deception. For God knows that when you eat, that your eyes will be opened and you will be like God. Now, listen. In this world we live in today, in this world we live in today, everybody in this... I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to, to put it on, on, on a certain generation. But church, we've lost a couple of generations in the church. And what, what they don't understand is the Word of God. And that's our fault. Uh, because we haven't taught them the Word of God. We've gotten away from Sunday school. We've gotten away from teaching the Word. We've gotten into a world today where all people want to do, and I'm talking about people that call themselves Christians, is they consider themselves Christians because they may go to church on Sunday morning or watch online on Sunday morning and, and pay their tithe and have a Bible, but they don't have relationship Amen. with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They have religion. Amen. Religion ain't going to get you to heaven. It is relationship. Okay? And that relationship is so important. I, I haven't lost my train of thought here. Why does Satan exist? Uh, the, the, the two key words in this that you're going to get out of this is Satan exists for Christ's glory. And Satan exists for your joy. Now you can sit there tonight and, and say, well, in this world, there's no joy in our lives. Well, you don't have Jesus there. Okay? Uh, listen, you're going to have trial. You're going to have tribulations. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but He delivers us through them all. And that's what we got to understand. My daddy always told me this. He said, I'd rather do my suffering on this side of eternity than on the other side of eternity. Okay? So before we leave tonight, I, I hope you get that why Satan exists is that God will get all the glory. And that you will have joy. And I'll go back to that old hymn. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Mm -hmm. Come on. Some, listen, let me tell you something Pentecostals. we got to get back to Pentecost. We've got to get back to Holy Spirit. We've got to get back to the third part of the Trinity. That third part that shows in us and out of us the glory of God and that praise and worship. The one thing I enjoyed so much in, in general conference, every night the stage was full of teenagers and, well, excuse me, some, I'm sure some were teenagers, but they were from all of our schools. We have three Pentecostal Holiness Church, uh, has three colleges. And those three colleges, I, I encourage you that if you have children, that you encourage them to go to one of those three colleges. There's a, a manual college that's in Georgia. There is Holmes Bible College. And, and there is a South, Southeastern or Southwestern, excuse me, Southwestern College. 
All of these schools teach the Word of God. And, and baby and I, as we would go down for the evening service, that stage was full. And yes, they were in jeans. And yes, they were in t-shirts. And yes, there was guitars and there was drums. There wasn't no flashing lights and all of that. But there was worship. Amen. There was worship. They sang some hymns. And then they sang some good modern Christian songs. And you saw the old, the middle-aged, and the young worshiping. And the greatest thing was you could feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. And church, I sat there with tears rolling down my face because that's my vision. My vision for CPHC Ministries here. That we have a stage full and a church full of old, young, middle-aged, all worshiping Jesus Christ. And that worship comes from the Holy Spirit who is the third part of the Trinity. Okay? I'm getting on Sunday. Alright? So, here's Satan. And, and, and Satan, uh, he, he, he is trying to deceive. He is trying. Jesus says of him in John 8 and uh, 44 that he was both a liar and a murderer. He was a murderer from the beginning and has nothing to do with the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. I told you when we studied the scripture about where he came from and the, how he fell from heaven, that he was God's probably the most beautiful angel God had. He was the orchestra of the music, or the leader of the music, the leader of the praise and worship. Come on, church. We, listen, we all need the Word of God. But before the Word of God, we need praise and worship, do we not? I ain't talking about three songs and sit down. I'm talking about some hand raising, some tear crying, some worship and praise and thanksgiving for what He's done for us. Amen? And that He loves us so much. So Satan, Satan comes as that serpent, that, that slithering snake. And in Revelation 12, 9, uh, the Bible tells us the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient, ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. If you've got your Bibles and you're looking at that in Revelation 12, 9, you need to underline that. He is the deceiver of the whole world. It goes back to the beginning. He is deceiving our young people. He's deceiving our middle aged. He is deceiving our older people. Listen, church, there again, those that are caught up in the sins of homosexuality and the LGB community, there again, we do not hate them. We understand that they have what? Been deceived by Satan. They've been lied to by Satan. Any of y'all, none of y'all in here ever been lied to, have you? Anybody in here ever been lied to? Oh, at least two of you, okay? How does it feel? Now, I told you not long ago, I had someone to sit in my office uh, and, and, and tell me all this stuff, and then later on I found out that the majority of it was a lie. Of course, in this day and time, people have their respect for a pastor anyway, so they'll lie to me just like they'll lie to anybody else. They have no respect. They have no honor. Why? Because they have no God. They have no big G God. They have no Jehovah. They have no Jesus. They have no Holy Spirit within them. Come on, church. Amen? Amen. So let's get into this. The, the whole 1 John 5.19 the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. The whole world lies in the power of the evil one. This is his day. This is his time. It is his day and time to deceive. It is his day and time to destroy. It is his day and time to come against. Why? And, and, and we're, we're going to get to that why he exists. But I need you to understand God did not make him evil. God did not. When he was made as an angel, he was perfect. He was in that perfect sense. He was there in the worship. But when that worship started going to God and when that worship started going, there's something that came up within him called pride. Yeah. 
And just like you and I, God made the angels to where they could either receive Christ and worship or reject. I've said this many times before. None of you want somebody in your life because they're forced to be in your life. You want somebody who wants to be with you, who has feelings for you, that who loves you. At the end of this, I wrote this. Uh, God doesn't want robots. He doesn't want slots. Brother Heller brought this up. That in a few years, we probably won't have denominations. We won't have... Listen, my wife came to me and told me that on the campus of... It's Winston-Salem. Was that right, baby? I believe it is the Winston-Salem College. The Baptist church there has closed their door after, I don't know how many years, 60-some-odd years. Wake Forest. Wake Forest, excuse me. Wake Forest. Wake Forest Baptist Church, a Baptist Church on the campus has closed their doors because now they're charging them so much rent and everything else that the church cannot survive on the campus. The devil is doing everything he can in this day and time to destroy the church. And you need to understand, the only way that you and I can defeat the enemy is to know the enemy. Come on, church. You got to know him. You got to know who he is. You got to know how he operates. Do you not understand when war goes on? And, and you'll probably hear me talk more about this because we had the head of the IPHC um, churches in uh, Ukraine who spoke uh, of the, the uh, second night of conference uh, uh, through an interpreter. And, and, and what an awesome service that was. And, and how he came to tell us the truth that the news is not telling you about the war in Ukraine. And I'll fill you in all on that later on because it's some really good information. But how God is working in this war that's going to end up into revelation of the tribulation and the, the, the war of Armageddon. Church, don't worry about World War III. It ain't going to come. The next war will be the War of Armageddon. And, and that's how close we are to the, 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 the rapture of the church, okay? So here God tells us that the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. All human, including those who compose the church, are subject to the evil God of this world. I wish somebody would stand up and tell me that the devil don't fight you. Anybody? Because he fights us all. He don't care how, how saved you are or who you are. He doesn't, no, he doesn't care. I need you to understand that. I, look at this, okay, from a, a true-false uh, kind of question to you. Is this true or false? God, and from the vantage point of the New Testament... Our Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the promised crusher of the serpent's head, He could have cast Satan into the lake of fire immediately after he rebelled or immediately after the deception in the garden or at any point from then until now, thus sparing the people of the world misery and suffering. Would you say true or false to that? It's 100% true. At any time, God could have thrown him into hell. But he did. Now you and I wish he did, but he did. Because, mm, didn't see, see, the difference between the generation today and, the, and, and my generation was we were made to work and appreciate things because we had to work for them we had to go through trials and tribulations to get them. And thus, in that circumstance, you appreciate so much more what you have. Amen. Come on, church. And we see that today. People don't appreciate anything. They expect to receive everything. They expect that you hand it out to them. They want the welfare check. They want the check from the government. They want the free phone. They want the free insurance. Let me tell you something. 
There is nothing that is free. Everything has a price. Even our salvation. Okay? So, that is true. In Colossians 1 and 6, he, beginning of time, God already knew the whole story. He's already been there, done that. He knew the whole story. Christ was the one in the beginning who spoke. Remember, Christ is the Word of God. And Christ spoke the galaxies. He spoke the moon. He spoke the stars. He did all of that. He could just have easily have removed the entire kingdom of darkness with one little word. But wouldn't the bride of Christ have been better off if he did that? No. We would not have been better off if he had done that. We'd have been those selfish little brats that are running the government today. Excuse me. They're not all young either. Amen. Some of them have dementia. But anyway. <laughs> let me move on. Okay? So why didn't the divine bride bridegroom just destroy Satan from the beginning. I want, you, I want you to look at this. Christ allowed the enemy to exist. Alright? I want you to look at Luke chapter 4, 18. Jesus came to proclaim liber liberty to the captives. Jesus came. Look at this. The Son of God, the perfect Son of God, no sin, perfect, the second part of the Trinity, lowered Himself to dirt. Yes, he did. did He not? Yes, he did. What are you made of? Dirt. You're made of dirt. I told you before I left, you're not a monkey. Alright? You're made of dirt. So He lowered Himself because He loves you so much. He loves the sinner so much. He loves the homosexual so much. He even loves Democrats. He loves everybody. And He would have that no man die and go to hell. Okay? People, uh, of course, they're going to come against us because we preach against uh, that there is a hell and that one day God will send you there. No, God will not send you there. You bought the ticket to hell. You're the one who did not believe in Christ. You're the one that rejected Christ. And thus with your rejection, you chose your eternity. When I taught young people for so many years, how many of y'all know there's always bullies? Even in the church, there's bullies. Alright? There's people that, that bully other people. And when I taught the young people, I always stressed to them, I said, there's people out there that they'll, they'll pretend to be your friend. They'll pretend to be on your side. They'll, 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 they'll want you to party with them. They'll want you to do all of these things that are fun for a season. Everybody knows sin is fun for a season? Amen. It is. But what does it lead to? Destruction. It leads to destruction. I've never seen a happy alcoholic. I've never seen a happy... Uh, <laughs> well, let me... Let me uh, I'll hold off on that one for just a minute. Let's, let's get back to this, okay? So, Jesus Christ had to come because there has to be a blood sacrifice. There has to be a blood sacrifice. Now I need you to think about this real, real close here. Satan had to be destroyed, but with God there is always a process. And with God, before, before time, before time was ever there, before the earth was ever created, there is a lot of things that you and I do not understand and do not know because it's knowledge above us that is only God knowledge. 
All the knowledge of Albert Einstein and all the scientists and all the people of the world that had the highest IQs, you could put them in a thimble and you still, how many knows what a thimble is, first of all? Praise God, some of you know what a thimble is. You can put them in a thimble and you still would not be able to see them with your eye because they're so microscopic compared to the wisdom and knowledge of God. Amen. Because He is wisdom and knowledge. He is everything. So through His death, Jesus Christ, He destroyed the one who has power of death, and that is the devil. That is in Hebrews chapter 2 and 14. What a Savior. What a Deliverer. Every liberated prisoner of war, and that's what you are, is a prisoner of war, because what it all comes down to is spiritual warfare. And church, what we need to understand is we are in war. Yes, we are. Do you not see how the devil, what does he try to do? He deceives and he divides. The country is more divided today, I believe, than it was in the Civil War. It is division in every aspect. And it's division all comes back to the Word of God and what the Word of God teaches. Amen. Coming back from Florida, my son was watching a, a movie, a child's movie. I knew when this out. And he stopped and he took his headphones off and he says, I'm... I'm so sick of this. He says, it don't even make sense. In this cartoon that your kids are watching, if you let them, I said, if you let them, there's two women who get married and have a baby. He said, that's not even possible. Everything you see on television is shoving homosexuality, LGBT, and all of that down your throat and telling you that if you are against it, you are a racist and you are a bigot. Well, guess what? I'm not a racist. I'm not a bigot. I'm a child of God. Alright? If I don't like Sister Linda because of the color of her skin, then I'm a racist and I'm a bigot. If she don't like me because of the color of my skin, because it's a two-way street, then she's a racist and a bigot. But because I don't condone your sin does not make me a racist being. Yeah. But that's what the world does. That's what Satan does. The principalities and the power. Do you not understand that these people that are creating these laws, these people are being deceived because it goes back. I told you this many times. When I was growing up with Bugs Bunny and all of them, they would have on the cartoons where the little devil was sitting on one shoulder and the little angel sitting in one shoulder and the angel was whispering in the cartoon's ear, oh, you need to do it this way. And the devil was whispering and we thought it was cute and everything. The little devil with his little pitchfork and his little horns and everything. And, and, and church, there is more truth in that than you realize. Because the devil is whispering in the world and into our children's ears. Oh, well, if you don't accept him because he thinks that he should be a girl, or you don't accept her because she thinks he should be a boy. Do you know we spent a whole day in conference discussing how we could put the terminology in our doctrine that we would not marry someone who had a sex change? That's, that, that's having to be in the church today. We've got to put it in our bylaws to protect us. Because the world today is calling us racist and everything if we don't do these things. Church, we better wake up and understand the coming of the Lord is at hand. And what we must do, we must do quickly. And that is understand that Satan came to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. But Jesus came and lowered Himself below every man and put on flesh and blood and died that you and I could have eternal life and be in His glory and have joy unspeakable and full of glory in the world to come. Amen. And that we need to be sharing the Gospel. Amen. And we must be having the backbone to stand up. Pastor, what has this got to do with the tribulation and the second coming of Jesus Christ? Everything. 
Because your enemy is going to do everything he can experience the extraordinary magnitude of joy. If we were not enslaved, we wouldn't understand what it's like to be free. Do you get it? How many remembers being a sinner? How many remember when you got saved? And, and I, I remember it so well that when I was a child. And I remember being on the front pew, kneeling down, and I was praying. And, and as a pastor's child, I got saved every Sunday. Some of y'all will get that when you get home. Because some of y'all needed to get saved every Sunday. But when it truly came to the heart, and I felt literally... I felt like something was lifted off my shoulders. Anybody ever had that feeling? That's called joy unspeakable and full of glory. It means that the blood of Jesus Christ has been applied to your life and you are no longer a part of this world. That you are a part of a new kingdom that is coming. And yes, you're going to go through suffering. Yes, you're going to go through trials. Yes, you're going to go through all the pains. And yes, you're going to go through death. But you know that you know, that you know because of two pieces of wood and three rusty nails that you have overcome the world through Jesus Christ because He overcame the world. Amen. Okay? Alright? Jesus, you, you, can't, you can't understand there again unless you can appreciate freedom unless you've been in captive. And let's go back there. That's the reason why America is in the state she's in today. It's because the kids and the generation that's trying to run this country today has never really had to suffer. Amen. They've never really had to suffer. To do without. And now, oh, I'm going to go there. I ain't preached in three weeks. Y'all better watch out. <laughs> now we got monkey pox. <clears throat> yeah. All right? My sister, my older sister called me, and she hadn't got the full explanation of what monkey pox is. All right? Anybody know what monkey pox is? Monkey pox is like the 1980s when AIDS came out. Where did AIDS start? Homosexuality. Where did monkey pox? Monkey pox. <laughs> anyway, I was on the phone with my sister. And with DT having COVID, and we were kind of strapped to the house for a week of vacation with COVID. Either I'm doing something right or I'm doing something wrong. Because <laughs> the devil sure is after me. And I, I, would, I, I walked a lot while I was gone. And I was walking, I was talking to my sister. And she was scared. I said, you ain't got nothing to be scared of. First of all, it's not an airborne virus. Second of all, the majority are homosexuals. Third, it has to do with your behind. I hate to tell you, I'm just being honest with you. Alright? And fourth, you got to be in skin contact with those people that's got the monkey. But they said they came from a monkey, so they named it after him. Monkey pox. In order to get it. The question that I heard was, do you think that this is God's retaliation for homosexuality? I said, yes. Just as I believe AIDS was. Amen. Let me tell you something. You're going to hear more and more about disease. Listen, COVID is here to stay. If you ain't got it, you're going to get it. And even if you got it, you'll probably get it again. It's going to become like the new flu, the new cold. They've already said that. Church, we don't need to be... Listen, the devil has deceived us for three or four years to get our minds focused on that. And I'm not saying we shouldn't have taken the precautions we should have. If I had to do it all again, I would still take the precautions that I took, did to protect my sheep. Amen? Yeah. But I'm telling you this, 
that Jesus Christ is still on the throne and God is still in control and the devil, yes, is the controller of this world to a certain extent, but what we're getting to understand is he's still got to go through God to do anything. Amen. That's what the Word of God says. Number one, Satan and demons obey Christ. Yes. <laughs> Even when Jesus put on flesh and blood, they, the demons still were scared of him. Listen to me. Consider Christ's 40 days battle in the devil in the wilderness. Remember, John the Baptist baptized him in the, in, in the Jordan. The, the Holy Spirit descended on him as a dove from heaven. And out of heaven came the sound of God who said, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. And immediately Jesus came up and went out and went into the wilderness. And for 40 days and 40 nights he fought. He did not eat. He did not drink. He fought with Satan. And Satan tried to convert him into a sinner. Satan tried to offer him everything of this world. Satan tried to offer him all the money, the riches, and everything of this world when he was the one, Jesus was the one who created it. Amen. But see, here's the difference, and you need to understand this. Jesus was now in the flesh. And see, listen to me. He had to overcome the flesh in order to sit at the right hand of the Father. Amen. You need to get that, okay? See, we just think that because He was the Son of God, that, that He didn't have to fight the trials and the tribulations like you and I did. Yes, He did. That's the reason He is so honored and He is above everything name and above all because He put on flesh, He put on an earthly mind, and He still overcame the world through the Father and the Holy Spirit helping Him, just like He helps you and I, but He did it through the flesh. So those 40 days in the desert... With Satan, he was in the flesh and Satan was tempting him. You may think, well, it was no big deal. He's the son of God. So he, he you know, but he was just like you or me. How many of y'all been tempted by the devil? Look, he's calling right now to tempt somebody. How, how many? How many has been tempted by the devil? Every last one of us. How many of you 100% has never given in? Exactly. John the Baptist. And people thought he was crazy. He's out there in camel hair. Oh, don't you know the Pentecostal sure wouldn't have had him. Because <laughs> he didn't have him soon and tight. He had him camel hair and a, lo a locust and honey. And he's out in the desert preaching, repent, repent, repent. And you know who he was preaching to? Who was he preaching to? Somebody said it. He was preaching to the church of that day. He was cheering. You know why? Because the church of that day had become like the church today. It's choking because people think that that's the only version. If God can translate it through King James, if you'll go back, King James was not perfect. And the people he had translated was not perfect. And I'm not against it. This is my King James Version. And you see it's worn worse than any of them. Because this is my shit. This one, baby told me I stopped using this one. And went to the other one. She said, you don't preach as good. Get that blue one back out. <laughs> so I got it back out. In jeans and t-shirt. And I watched them worshiping. And I watched the tears roll down their face. I watched the hands in the air. And I watched them worship. Was it the worship I was used to? No. But it was worship. Amen. You know why? Because I felt the Spirit of the Lord. I felt the Holy Spirit moving. I felt the power of God there. 
And church, that's where CPHC Ministries is going to get back to. We're, listen, we're, we're, we're ahead of the game because we're already seeing it. I've heard about the two services and the altar being filled and the good services that you've had. But I'm telling you, something greater is coming. Something greater is coming. We've had two preachers that I've had in the pulpit that, that God had here for the appointed time that weren't supposed to be here, but, but because of circumstance, I had them come in. I was supposed to be away, but I was here. And they both spoke a prophetic word over this church, and it was that this church was going to go places and do things different like never before for the kingdom and souls being one to the kingdom. Somebody give God praise. Yeah. He praised Him. i got to get a drink in. <laughs> Listen, church. Listen, Matthew 4, 10 through 11. You can write this down. Then Jesus said to him, be gone. After the 40 days, Jesus just got sick of him and said, be gone. Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Amen. You better get that. You better get that. Satan wants you to worship him. And when we sin and when we go through the worldly things, we are worshiping Satan. And we all fall and come short sometimes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Especially, listen, then the devil left him. Jesus said, be gone. And the devil had to go. Church, listen, this is, the, this is my Savior, Jesus. This is the bridegroom. He said, be gone. And the devil left him. And angels came and were ministering to him. What does that tell you? It tells you that Jesus Christ was weak. He had not eaten or drinking, drank, excuse me, terminology. He had not, uh, hey, I'm in chapter, it don't matter. He had not had no water. He had not had no mountain. He had had no uh, Kool-Aid. He had had nothing for 40 days. And he was in the flesh. Not only was he... Let me, let me tell you something. How many knows that when the body gets weak, this thing up here, the first computer ever invented, the human brain, does what? It gets weak. It gets weak. So what did God do? He sent down angels and ministered unto Jesus in the wilderness. Church, do you know what will happen to you? Now listen to you. Listen to me. This is why it's so important that our children and our young people learn to worship Learn to worship. Let me tell you something. You can tell them how to do it all you want to. See, I'm one of those people. Don't, don't, don't. I, 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 you, you got to not give me a book to read to how to do something. You got to show me. Amen. And you show me, I can do it. What are we showing the generation today? Now, Chadburn, Sunday morning, I'm telling you, you're getting your praise on. I'm seeing people in the past I, almost 10 years now being here, I'm seeing people that I've never seen raise their hand, raise their hand. I'm seeing people come to the altar that I've never seen come to the altar, come to the altar. I'm seeing people I've never seen tears flow down the fairies, tears flow down. What does this tell me? They are getting in tune with the Holy Spirit. They are getting in tune with their their relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. They're getting in tune. You got listen. Some of y'all got to break up with the devil. Amen. Sure. You got to break up with the devil. You got to tell him it's off. We're through. We listen. We're gone. We live in a world today that 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 the church don't preach that shacking up is wrong. The church doesn't preach that sex before marriage is not is is wrong. 
The church doesn't preach that when you get married, your vows should be important. And, and even though one of the two makes mistakes, you should counsel and try to put the marriage back together. That divorce is something that God does not meant to be. Amen. But you see, we're in that society that you can't offend anybody. You might offend. Well, guess what? What about you offending me as a Christian? Amen. Come on. See, see, this is what really ticks me off. I, I'm going back to my Plymouth years. They said I always talked about what ticked me off. This is one thing that really ticks me off. People tell, tell, will tell me that I offend them because of my beliefs, but they could give. They could care less. See, the Holy Spirit controls my tongue. They could care less that what they do offends me. Amen. Why? Because it goes back to the very beginning where what did Satan tell Eve? God doesn't want you to eat of the tree because if you eat of the tree, you'll be like God. Is that not what he said? What does the world tell you today? You're your own God. You can, you can, you can serve whatever God you want because you're your own God. If I'm my own God, God help me. <laughs> well, that ain't going to work either because if I'm my own God, I've got to help myself. And I can't help myself. Come on. You know, the old saying used to be, God helps those that help themselves. That ain't true. Amen. Because you can't help yourself. You can't do anything without Holy Spirit. Amen. You can't do anything without Jesus Christ. You can't do anything without Jehovah Jireh. Okay? I ain't even got halfway through this and I got five minutes. Listen. The devil left it alone. Now, now listen. Look at the victories over the demons. Mark chapter 1, verse 23 through 27. Now there was a man in the synagogue who was, had unclean spirit. And he cried out saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. This is a demon who says, I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him saying, be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him, that means put him into like a, a convulsion in, in, in like a, uh, a, 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 seizure. a seizure. That's the word I'm looking for. Like a seizure. And cried out with a loud voice. He came out of him. One time he said, come out. The body started shaking. He started having a seizure like and the demon came out of him. Then they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, and they said, What is this? What new doctrine is this? For with the authority he commands even unclean spirits, and they obey him. Yes. Jesus says, But if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon me. <laughs> I, I love this vision. Jesus says, if I cast out demons with the finger of God, God's big hand comes down with his little finger and just <laughs> cast it out. <laughs> That's my God! Amen. Amen. So Satan exists to give God glory. Because if Satan wasn't there, there would be no glory going to God. So that glory is there. Listen. Listen. Everything changed in Luke chapter 22 and 53 because the hour had come. Remember, Jesus Christ kept saying up until this time, He says, it's not my time. The hour has not come. Several places in Scripture, He said it to Mary at the wedding uh, when He turned the water into wine. He said, my hour has not come. And Mary said, whatever He tells you to do, just do it because that's my boy and I know He's going to do something. He ain't going to let this wedding go down. Church, he's not going to let... Listen, church, he's not going to let your party go down. Amen. we got to start partying in the Spirit. Amen. I'm not 
talking about charismatic people trying to teach you stuff. People trying to teach you to talk in tongues. You run away from it as fast as you can because that's of the devil. Holy Spirit don't need nobody to help him teach you how to talk in tongues. It is something that comes in you and comes out of you. Okay? Now we'll get more into that as I preach on that. The fact that Satan and demons obey Christ result in glory for him. The profound joy for us who follow Christ. In the end, who's going to be rejoicing? In the end, who's going to have joy? In the end, who's going to be partying and having a good time? In the end, who? It is the children of God, the bride of Christ. It is you. I come to give you good news. There's a party and you've been invited to that party. And all you got to do is receive it through the blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody please run out. Andrew, run out in front and tell me that the sign still says Pentecost Holiness Church. Thank you, Sister Brenda. I'm going to try to end on this and Chris Brown can just shoot me. In Gethsemane, the mob approaches with swords and clubs. Everywhere else through Scripture, Jesus, when they came after Him, Jesus escaped. But this time He didn't. In Luke 22 and 53, He said, This is your hour, the power of darkness. Everything changed in that hour. Amen. That in the Garden of Gethsemane. He knew it was coming. Jesus knew it was coming. But instead of asking the Father to save Him from the hour, He prayed, Father, glorify Your name. Now listen, I want to read this to you and I'll try to, try to wrap it up in the next five or ten minutes. John 12, 27-31 Now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. This is Jesus talking. But for this purpose, I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Jesus said, passion, purpose, praise. Even Jesus had passion, purpose, praise. He said, for this hour of darkness, I came. This is the reason I put on flesh and blood. It's for this mob to take me away. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and I will glorify it again. Who was that? That was Daddy talking. That was God the Father talking. Therefore the people who stood by and heard it said, Be cast out. Amen. Payday. It was payday. And the only way that payment for sin could be paid was the shedding of blood. Amen. And for all the years prior to the coming of the Messiah, they had, they had mutilated and sacrificed lambs and, and, and doves and, and many different animals on the altar as, as a sacrifice. But that was not good enough. Amen. It had to be the Son of God. Amen. It had to be Jesus Christ. That perfect sacrifice, the only human being. It had to be a human being. Amen. And it, the only human being that had never made a mistake. Amen. Who never sinned. He was perfect. He was. And he gave himself. This drama called Life Has a Happy Ending. How many, how many of your lives is just a drama every day? Some of y'all didn't raise your hand. Well, glory to God, please talk to me after church because I'd like to know why. <laughs> Romans 16, 17 through 20. Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learn and avoid them. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to get this one. I'm, I'm tempted to get this one tattooed on my shoulder. 
And I don't even believe in tattoos. <laughs> you know what I know why? Because one of the biggest places God, the devil, the devil tries to cause confusion and division is in the church. Amen. Amen. Listen to what the word says. Paul says, brethren, those who cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you've learned, avoid them. Amen. And you know what I do? I avoid those people as much as possible. Because you know what they do? They bring you down. How many's got people that you know that bring you down? Yes. How many y'all avoid them? I'll be I'll be at Walmart. I'll I'll, I'll run down another aisle. Lord knows I will. For those who are such do not serve the Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. Mm. For your obedience has become known to all. Therefore, I am glad on your behalf, but I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. He says, I want you to understand what evil is. I want you to understand who Satan is. I want you to know your enemy so when your enemy tries to use you, you come against him by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the God of peace, look at verse 20, the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. Amen. Your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's how Paul ended it with the Roman church. He said, there's going to be people in the church, outside the church, that's going to offend you. Avoid them. They don't have flattering words and everything else, but just avoid them. And then he said, the God of peace will help you crush them like he said in Genesis. What happened in Genesis? He told uh, mankind, he said, there was going to come the offspring of a woman. That was Jesus Christ. That would crush the serpent's head. Who was the serpent? The Satan. That was the devil. And that day has still yet to come, but it is coming soon. Because He is the ruler of the world right now. He is the ruler and the principalities of this world. And He is in control to a certain extent. But I'm telling you, there's coming a day, and it's coming real fast because Russia's bringing it to pass. And, and Biden's bringing it to pass. And, and, and all these government officials that are passing laws against the Word of God, I don't care what, if they're Democrat, Republican, or Independent, it don't matter. When you go against the Word of God, you are going against God Himself, and you're going to pay the price for it. Because there's coming a day real soon that the eastern skies will split open. Jesus Christ will step out on a cloud. The trumpet of the Lord shall sound. The dead in Christ shall rise, and we that remain shall shall be called up to meet Him in the middle of the air, and forever we shall be with the Lord. And then we're going to get a white linen robe, and we're going to get a pair of new sandals, and we're going to get a brand new horse that's going to be spotless white, and we're going to ride behind the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because it will be on His thigh, and He will come back, and there will be no more Russia, there will be no more United States. There will be no more countries because every kingdom shall bow and every man and woman that has ever lived shall bow before Jesus Christ and proclaim Him King of kings and Lord of lords. And those that have rejected Him will be cast into hell with Satan and the final enemy, death. Death will be thrown into hell along with uh, uh, Sh Shiloh, which is the hell that is underneath the earth. And there will be a new heaven and there will be a new earth. And we will have joy unspeakable and full of glory because the King of Kings will take the throne and will rule and reign because He is the only one that is anointed to open the seals and to take back what the Satan has tried to destroy. Somebody give God praise. Stand to your feet. Jesus is coming. What are we doing? What are we doing? It is war. The last part of this is spiritual warfare. I may go into that next week as the Lord leads. 
But you need to be praying for Sunday. You need to be praying for me. That God gives me the word. Tomorrow I plan on getting my headphones, getting in the word, and going and listening. Because as God is leading me with these sermons on Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Because church, we need the Holy Spirit to bring revival. Not in a preacher. Not in a bunch of services. But in us. Amen. Somebody say, Father. Father I need. Revived by the Holy Spirit in my life. Father, right now, I praise you and I thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you and praise you that, Lord God, you did not destroy Satan in the beginning. But, Father God, you gave all of mankind the chance, Lord God, to spend eternity with you. That, Lord, you loved us enough that you sent your only begotten Son. That if we will believe on him, receive him in our lives and repent of our sins, then, Father, we can have everlasting life. Now, Father, in these last days, the enemy is whispering in our ears. He is doing everything to tell us the lies that he can only tell. But, Father God, you are there if we will just reach out. Father, I pray a supernatural, spiritual anointing to come down upon CPHC Ministries and upon every ministry in this county, Father God, that your Holy Spirit will move like that mighty rushing wind in Acts chapter 2. Lord God, it was not a wind, it was a sound, but it was as the sound of a mighty rushing wind. And it sat upon them with that cloven tones of fire. And Father, they were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, let it be. Let it be and let us take up the Word of God, which is our sword, and go forward to fight the battle and take our children, our grandchildren, our nephews, our nieces, our neighbors, everybody that we can see and win them to the kingdom. Father, let it be. Somebody say, let it be, Lord. Let it be, Lord. Say it again. Let it be, Lord. Say it again. Let it be. Now, Father, we give you the honor, we give you the glory, because all honor and glory go to you. In Jesus' holy name and all God's children said, Amen. I want you to come back Sunday. I want you to be prayed up, packed up, and ready to go up if Jesus should call us. Amen. I want you to bring five people.